Hi, this is Sharmin here. Today I'm going to teach you GCSE Biology 2018 question paper. Okay, so you just download from internet and keep practicing. Okay, so if you're interested, please continue watching. This is a question number eight. Scientists want to breed cows that produce milk with a low concentration of fat. Figure 10 shows information about the milk in one group of cows. The cows were all the same type. So figure 10, the mean percentage of fat in the milk is equal to the modal value. Give the mean percentage of fat in milk of this cow. So here is the mean percentage we need to find out. Let's find out. So you just see here the percentage fat in milk here total. So if you need to find out the mean, mean percentage, so you add all the number and divide it by total number here. So we can see here 3.75. Answer is 3.7. Okay. So how can you find the mean, mean value? So you just add all the numbers divided by the numbers, your total number. So you can find the mean value. Question number eight part. A student suggested the percentage of fat in milk is controlled by one dominant allele and one recessive allele. All right. How many different phenotypes would these produce? So uh, phenotype, do you know what is phenotype? So phenotype, the characteristics of an organism which can be seen. So how much tall is this and uh, how much big? And genotype, that is the genetic makeup of an organism. So this is uh, answer will be two. So another question, give the evidence from figure 10 on page 61, which shows the percentage of fat in the milk is controlled by several genes. So let's see the figure 10. So this is figure 10 shows, uh, uh, shows here. So the evidence from and which shows the percentage of fat in milk. Milk is controlled by several genes. So uh, the answer will be feature controlled, controlled by several genes, okay? So one of the genes scores for an enzyme used in fat metabolism. A mutation in this gene causes a reduction in milk fat. The mutation changes one amino acid in the enzyme an enzyme molecule and explain how a change in one amino acid in an enzyme molecule could stop the enzyme working. So what is mutation? Well, mutation is a change that occurs in our DNA sequence and either due to mistakes when the DNA is copied. So in this case, explain how a change in one amino acid in an enzyme molecule could stop the enzyme working. So if a mutation resulted in the change of one amino acid in an enzyme, uh, enzyme molecule, this could stop the enzyme working because the shape of an shape of the enzyme and in particular its active site would be altered so that the substrate uh, so that uh, so the substrate would no longer fit okay this is the enzyme activity the scientists found one cow with a mutation the cow's milk contained only 2.9 percent fat figure 11 shows the percentage of fat in the milk of cattle related to the cow with the mutation so you can see here, this is the cow with mutation here, okay? So, so here is a female. So female with low fat, this one is a female with low fat. This is a black color one. And uh, this is a uh, square shape. This is the male whose female offspring have a low fat milk. And here, this is a female with high fat milk and male, this one, male whose female offspring have a high fat milk, okay? So animal eight is homozygous, okay? So animal eight, this is animal eight is homozygous. This is a male and this is also, uh, uh, this is also high fat milk. And mutation in animal seven, okay, 
So this is uh, Sabin produce a dominant allele for making low fat milk. Okay, so give evidence from figure 11 that animal 7 is heterozygous. So what is heterozygous? Well, heterozygous, uh, heterozygous, an individual who has unlike allele for particular trait, okay? And uh, what is homozygous? Homozygous, an individual who has, um, who has identical allele for a particular trait. That means, uh, in this case, uh, here is a uh, capital letter, or you can use uh, a small, uh, small, here is a small letter and here is a same okay this is a homozygous and heterozygous in this case capital T and small t this is a heterozygous okay next one so animal animal 7 and 8 produce 11 offspring these offspring were produced by in vitro fertilization that is IVF the embryos from IVF were transferred into 11 other cows suggest why IVF and embryo transfer were so suggest why IVF and embryo transfer were used rather than allowing animal 7 and 8 to mate naturally what's the reason why need why need IVF and embryo transfer so offspring quickly rather than waiting many years for the parents to produce them naturally so this is uh, this is you can see seven and this is eight okay this is eight um, animals okay so draw a pennant square diagram to show a cross between animal seven and eight and identify identify which offspring produce low fat milk and which offspring produce high fat milk use the following symbol here is a capital D dominant allele for making low fat milk and recessive allele for making high fat milk so uh, I'm just showing here this is a panet panet square is a square diagram that is used to predict the genotypes of a breeding experiment okay and uh, here is a, what is dominant allele well dominant allele is a variation of a gene that will produce a certain phenotype even in a presence of other alleles and recessive allele recessive alleles only show their effect if the individuals has two copies of the allele so in this case i'm using here here is a uh, seven here is a seven and here is a eight okay this is and here you just see here uh, capital D and here is small d small d and small d so it's produce uh, this is uh, uh, this is 50 percent offspring would produce high fat milk and 50 percent produce low fat milk all right so this is last question question number eight part two part eight the scientists want to produce a type of cattle that makes large volumes of low fat milk. The scientists will selectively breed some of the animals shown in figure 11. So this is a figure 11 and describe how the scientists would do this. Well, cows were crossed with cows or with animals that produce low fat milk or with animals that produce a large volume of milk. The best male and female offspring should be selected repeatedly for breeding in uh, in subsequent generations. All right. Question number nine. Figure twelve shows a ring-tailed lemur. So this is a figure twelve. So table five shows part of the classification of ring-tailed lemur. Complete table five to give the name of the missing classification groups. Okay. All right. So here you can see the classification group here, okay. So first you can see kingdom, phylum, okay. Name here, animalia, okay. So this is here. So something is missing, not everything is done here. Genus here. So class, order, family, then genus and species, okay. So give the binomial name of the ring-tailed lemur. Use information from table 5. 
So this is at table five, you just help here. So binomial name. So what is binomial name? Well, the common name given to an organism may vary in different part of the world and this can cause confusion. So Linnaeus used Latin to give, uh, give two names for each organism and these produce of naming of called binomial system and is called binomial name. So the first name refers to the genus, okay? So this is, here is already an answer here. And it's always start with capital letter. And second one, you just no need to use here capital letter. It will be small letter, okay? All right. Okay, so lemurs are only found on the island of Madagascar. Madagascar is off the coast of Africa. Well, so scientists think that ancestors of modern lemurs involved in Africa and reached Madagascar about 50 to 60 million years ago. So it's quite long. Today, there are many species of lemur living in Madagascar. Figure 13 on page 78 shows information about water currents. Figure 14 on page 79 shows the distribution of three species of lemur on Madagascar. So here is a, this is 77 page. Next page is this, you can see that here is information about water current. And next page you can find the three species of lemur. Okay, all right. So here is a figure, you can see Madagascar here. Okay, this is Africa. So water currency, this is a flowing here 50 to 60 million years ago and water currents today. Okay, so this is water currents today. Uh, they, that is, so let's say another picture on another diagram here. So this diagram here, species P and species Q here you can see and ring tail limo here, okay. Suggest how ancestors of modern limo reached Madagascar. So limo would have had to swim 400 kilometers to get the Madagascar, okay. Describe how the ancestors of modern limo may have evolved into the species shown in figure 14. So uh, you just see here, see figure 14, this is, uh, this is the species you can see P and Q. So uh, how, uh, how, uh, how the ancestors of modern lemurs may have evolved into the species shown in here. So this is genetic variation or mutation within each population that lead to the better adapted surviving long enough to reproduce and pass on their um, beneficial alleles to their offspring, even totally producing uh, different groups of lemurs that could not uh, reproduce with numbers of another group of produce. Uh, produce fertile offspring okay so so yeah so that is end of question number nine so guys i hope that's all thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and share with your family and friend if you need more class go to my website www.advocatebiology.simplesite.com